In India, you know, the India is a unique uh, situation because we have all the drugs available, but there are many of the generic drugs are available. So, some of those we do not know the quality because the generic drugs are not controlled in India as compared to the FDA control in United States. So, it is very difficult to see, make sure that the quality of drugs is right. So, that is an additional factor that comes into play when we treat our patients in the in the in practice and that is something unique because this is not faced by the European countries or the or the United States and we have to keep in mind the drugs that we use so that you know we do not give substandard drugs to the patients. That is a very very important question and it has its legal implications also. So, it is very difficult for us to do studies and then say that this drug is good or bad and it basically there is no agency that tests the drug. So, if, if a drug is available in the market, it is a DCGI that is a drug controller general of India. If it allows a drug to be marketed, the subsequent drugs do not have to be tested. So, then in that situation, we do not know the quality of drugs that are available in the country and what we do is most of the time, it is a clinical experience and we try to use it, you know, that we have various parameters through which we check the company, how much they, they invest in the research and development, how much they are, you know, they are in the market for how long, so uh, how much is the turnover. So, depending on all this and along with that our clinical experience, we use drugs and what is unique in Tata Memorial Hospital is that we have a, com a drug committee which actually through this all this various uh, you know methods of testing or at least getting the information of the drug, then we actually select certain drugs and only those drugs are asked to be bid, to bid for the price and according to the prices actually then they are kept. So, it is a uni unique situation, but at Tata Memorial Hospital we actually select only a few drugs which the all the clinicians are comfortable with and only those drugs are kept uh, for sale in the hospital. And the other unique part of Tata Memorial Hospital is that, you know, in India we sell drugs, actually the drugs are sold on MRP or the maximum retail price, but the drug, actual price of the drug may be entirely different. For example, if the MRP written on the drug is 1000 euros, the actual drug may be sold at 250 euros, you know. So, many other hospitals actually they buy it for 1000 euros, I mean they buy it for 250 euros, but they sell it at 1000 euros, but at Tata Memorial we sell it at the price that we get, so that the drugs are really cheap in the hospital and the, our patients get the whole benefit of the cost, uh, you know that, that we, the reduced cost that we get. And that is why the reason why we get, like last year we treated it, we registered more than 60,000 uh, new patients in one year and one of the reasons why people come is because the treatment is quite economical in the center and the patients get all the benefit of whatever cost reduction that we can do in, in the treatment. That is one study we published just two years back or three years back and what we analyzed was out of the 440 females with HER2 new positive breast cancers who are eligible to get Herceptin because Herceptin is standard of care for HER2 new positive breast cancers. But out of those 441 uh, patients that we had, only 8 percent of those got the drug, got Herceptin and very importantly half of this got it because they were enrolled on some trial. So, actually only 4 percent of the patients who are HER2 new positive that female breast cancer patients got the drug. The situation has improved now because the drug prices have come, come down and now in the next few actually months, we will start getting the generics also because they are already approved by DCJ and hopefully in the next few months, we will get the generics also for the drug and when that come, the cost will further go down and hopefully more patients will get the benefit out of it. But this is true for Herceptin because it is there in the market for some time. The newer targeted agents which are coming in the market, the cost is so exorbitant that uh, basically very, very few of our patients really can get the benefit of any of the new, not only targeted agents, but even the chemotherapeutic drugs. And that is why at the Tata Memorial Hospital, we are constantly looking for what we call drug repositioning or drug repurposing. That means, we try to see if the 
known drugs for example propranolol as an anti angiogenic agent or metformin as a biological response modifier you know we have cyclicoxib or cox2 inhibitor as a biological agent in this thing so we are trying to explore all this what we call you know drug repurposing so that that would enhance the effect of our chemotherapeutic drugs that we give and bring down the cost uh, further for the patient so that is one of the areas that uh, basically my group is interested in and we are trying to uh, you know ultimately one of the main challenges that we uh, the oncological community is facing now is not only finding cures for cancer but also you know how to decrease the cost of cancer and how to make cancer treatment more affordable to the patients and uh, as we know basically in the next few years you know 70 percent or 80 percent at least 70 percent of the patients with cancer will be in the low and middle income countries so we have to start uh, you know thinking about it because until now we always thought that cancer is a disease of the developed countries and you know the it's not important in low and middle income countries where infections and all the other communicable diseases are more common but that is no longer an issue now because it's not really that the incidence of cancer it's increasing it's increasing but that's not the only reason the main reason is the population in this country is, is growing and the population in the developed countries is it's either stable or coming down so because of that i think in the next few years that is by 2030 more than 70 percent of the patients with cancer would be in the low and middle income countries and unless we tackle this problem it will be very very difficult for the patients there to take uh, you know cancer anti cancer treatment actually metronomic is a concept which came from the west we were doing it actually in india you know many of us were doing it out of necessity that means we were giving our patients this load uh, you know in palliative setting is to give them this oral low, low dose therapies just to palliate them but now with the scientific you know research behind it and the scientific concepts that are coming out in metronomic therapies it is now becoming more and more acceptable to the not only to the oncologist but also to the patients because metronomic therapies is a unique way of giving treatment because uh, you know what happens is when you give your maximum tolerated dose based therapies which are so called standard of care that means they give the highest dose of a drug and then give the next dose after 2 3 weeks by when the counts recover by that we also causing damage to the tumor micro environment and this itself can cause lot of resistance and that is maybe one of the reasons why unlike in pediatric cancers which are highly curable with this type of therapy because pediatric cancers are more homogeneous population you know so they respond well to this MTD type of therapies but in adult cancers it is a more heterogeneous group of, of, of cancer cells. So, even in one patient in a, in a patient for example of breast cancer there is so much heterogeneity that if you give only this high dose of MTD based therapies in no time or in a short time you can develop secondary resistance and then basically they do not respond to any treatment. So, the concept here is that you use your standard MTD based therapies up front decrease the tumor load and once you decrease the tumor load maintain that or use start using the metronomic therapies which that basically you do not allow it cause some type of tumor dormancy and do not allow the tumor to you know to repopulate back and hopefully you know we may not cure the patient but like diabetes or hypertension you give the drug continuously you keep it under control and the patients do well you know none most of the patients with diabetes or cancer do not die of the disease but die because of the age related problem. So, same way here uh, you know cancer change it from a acute disease to a more chronic disease and you know let the patient and the advantage is these are low dose drugs. So, many of these are tolerated very well by the patients and uh, you know basically you have good quality of life and maybe better outcome also. So, that is a concept which we are trying to explore now. It is a very unique regimen because you know there is a drug called tamoxifen which is a anti estrogen it is a hormonal drug which was used mainly in patients with breast cancer. But we know that tamoxifen has lot of other biological uh, you know properties especially it is in the higher dose it is an anti angiogenic it is basically it decreases the TGF beta so it causes other changes also 
and this concept came because initially we used to use this drug uh, when I was at St. Jude's we used to use this drug for patients with brain tumors and uh, we were using anywhere from 40 to 160 milligram per meter square and the patients used to tolerate it well. So, you know we thought if it is an anti-angiogenic why not use it in sarcoma because at that time we had no treatment for patients who relapsed with the disease and the overall outcome was very, very poor. Basically, it was in months. So, we started using this combination of tamoxifen with etoposide and cyclophosphamide. All these three are oral drugs, very cheap in India. Monthly cost of the drugs will, less, will be around 20 to 25 dollars and with that we got excellent results and now we actually when we analyze the data over time actually we saw that the median survival is in years as compared to months with the other therapy and the next plan is to use this drug, you know combination maybe as maintenance therapies in patients with metastatic disease who do very poorly with so called standard of care. So, it is a very unique combination and has given us excellent results in, in especially in Ewing's and in, uh, Ewing's and in uh, rhabdomyosarcomas. So, we, we are actually per, you know we will explore it further in the coming months. Yeah. And like we discuss, you know, not only when we present this data and we always tell, you know, that this will be important for developing countries. Many of my colleagues from developed countries ask, why would not this not be useful in developed countries? Because price is an important factor also in developed countries. The only thing is that, you know, we have to do all this thing in a scientific way. Like the data which we have now is hypothesis generating data. It is what we can say pilot data. So, it has we have done something, it has given us a response, but now the second step would be to do scientific studies with both the laboratory as well as the you know especially randomized trials where you give standard of care in one arm and the metronomic therapy in the other and see whether it really makes a difference and in this respect actually we have started a first randomized trial in patients with head and neck cancer because head and neck cancer is one of the commonest cancer in our country. Many people uh, do not smoke, but they chew the tobacco and because of that there is lot of oral cancer in our country and many of these patients are from poor economic background, they come with advanced disease and uh, not only relapsed uh, patients, but also new patients who come with advanced disease. Nearly 60 percent of them get the disease recurrences and it is very difficult to treat. So, because of that we started using a oral simple celecoxib and uh, basically uh, you know methotrexate based oral protocol in a new adjuvant setting and then continued it in the perioperative setting and as maintenance. And uh, you know those who took at least 3 months of this drug more than 90 percent of them were doing well. So, seeing this response is actually now we have started a randomized trial where we will be giving this we have, we have started giving this therapy you know to one arm and the other arm gets a standard of care and hopefully this is going to be a 400 patient. A uh, trial actually large trial with good uh, power of telling us whether it is really useful and you know in the coming years it will tell us whether this treatment really makes a difference as we had seen in the pilot data. So, that is one thing. The other area where we are interested is in the triple negative breast cancer where again we were using this uh, you know metronomic maintenance after the standard therapies and uh, all of our patients who had advanced disease not locally advanced is not the metastatic one, but the locally advanced metast non metastatic triple negative breast cancers are uh, many of them are doing well. So, because of that we hope that you know we can use this because up till now for triple negative breast cancer there was no maintenance therapy. Like in ERPR positive we give the hormonal therapy tamoxifen or letrozole some type of maintenance is given for HER2 new positive breast cancers we give them uh, Herceptin. But for this patient there was no therapy and I think this has made a difference, this maintenance therapy has made a much important difference in the outcome of this patient and we hope to start again this as a randomized trial in the, in, in the hospital in the coming uh, few months or years. Gleevec is a very, very important story, but you know Gleevec is now because of the generics, Gleevec, the generic people fought the case we as you know it, it went even in the international forum, but you know it is it is important we always say in our country that the drugs all new drugs we need new drugs 
we need new effective drugs, but at the same time we need new effective cost effective drugs also. So, in that respect actually you know we always feel and we talk with the company people when we talk with the pharma that you have to keep your drug you know you have to make profit otherwise who will be interested in uh, taking out new molecules, but it the pricing of the drug should be GDP based basically you know a drug which costs 10,000 dollars in USA cannot be sold at 10,000 dollars in, in India. For example, the average uh, you know uh, salary of an Indian would be in terms of basically a few hundred dollars as compared to uh, you know thousands of dollars in USA. So, you have to make sure that the drug is sold at a you know according to the GDP of that country, otherwise we lose effective drugs. See there are hundreds of other drugs available which really may not make a big difference, but Glivac or Imatinib was one drug which really really made a difference and uh, we will see that we will read in the you know the journals we will go to when we go to meeting we will see that Glivac or Imatinib is an excellent drug for chronic myeloid leukemia, but we could not give that to our patients and people would our patients would read it through the net and they will demand and we will say we cannot give because the cost of the drug was exorbitant and you know we could not give it to this thing, but with the generics the cost came down. At the same time the you know the Max Foundation also started a GPAP program through which hundreds and thousands of patients are getting a free drug now. All this has helped to improve the outcome and you know now chronic myeloid leukemia no longer is, is a challenging this thing because most of the patients do well if they take the proper drugs. I think it is a good example where if you if the community and the pharma come together I think we can do something good for our patient. So, the, uh, the pharma also with the NGO the, you know with the GPAP foundation actually really tried to give many of the patients free drugs. So, I think we need some type of uh, you know joint action because it has to be a public private partnership and especially for effective drugs. There are other non-effective drugs we are not worried you know we can wait for those, but for the effective drugs there need to be some way because it is like keeping the you know there is water in front of you and you cannot drink it, it is it is not ethically right and for us it was very very difficult to treat our patients with knowing the having the knowledge that there is something effective available and we could not give it. But uh, you know the pharma also needs a profit, but it has to be in such a way that both benefit out of it.